Welcome back to the Maelstrom, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be doing our first how to play video for Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. Today we are going to be covering actions both in and out of combat. In an effort to continually bring more energy to the growth of Conquest, we're building this How to Play series as a way to help new and prospective players understand the rules. Though our plan is to eventually cover the bulk of the rules of the game in detail, these rules are also available for free online at Parabellum's website. It is our hope that these videos will provide a supplement to the written rules, giving visual examples of many potential scenarios within the game. In a standard conquest turn, most units will be eligible for two actions when it is their turn to activate. These actions are split into two categories, known as out of combat actions and combat actions. This split essentially determines which actions can be taken at what time. For today, we will be discussing each of these actions in summary only with simple examples where applicable. In future how to play videos, we will further break down these into a deep dive into the mechanics of each action. First up, we have out of combat actions. These actions are march, charge, rally, reform, take aim, and volley. Next are the combat actions, which consist of clash, combat rally, combat reform, inspire, and withdraw. So when your unit is selected to march for one of their actions, they're able to move up to their march value. In the instance of the Vanguard clones, they have a six inch march which will move the regiment forward six inches. So here for the charge, the Raiders are going to attempt to make a charge against the Brute Drones. Um, we have already pre-measured, which you are allowed to do in this game at any time. Um, and the distance to the Brute Drones is nine inches. Now the Raiders have a march uh, that is five inches. So to make this charge, they need to roll a four on a D6 to be able to make the charge. And in this instance, with a two, they would fall short. However, you do get to move the distance of the D6 for the action, even if you fail. So in this instance, the Raiders would be able to move forward two inches. Next up is the rally action, which is simple to explain. For a few different reasons, a regiment might become broken during the course of play. The most common reason for this is losing half of the stands from the regiment during the course of the turn. A broken regiment is vulnerable to being shattered, which is essentially taking on a second broken effect. Being shattered instantly destroys whatever remains of the regiment as they are broken apart as a fighting force. The rally action is used to immediately remove the broken effect from a unit. Reform is used to change the position of your regiments and potentially their facing as well. This action allows them to adopt a new formation, including pointing in a different direction. The only restriction is that the center of the regiment must remain in the same location. In the example here, you can see that the Raiders and their Jarl have gone from a single line of warriors to a block that is two by two. Take aim is a simple action, allowing a regiment that is planning to volley to receive plus one to their volley characteristic thereby allowing them to be more accurate for the coming action. With the Raiders having failed their charge, they opt to use a volley attack for this action. Um, for this action, they're going to need to roll against their volley characteristic, which is a one. To be eligible to do this, you do need the barrage roll. Um, the Raiders have throwing axes, so they have a, a barrage value of one. You take that value and you multiply it by the number of models that are throwing. Uh, however, uh, if you are outside half range, your number of shots are halved. In the instance of the Raiders, they have 12 inch range for their throwing weapons. They are outside of six inches. So only six Raiders are eligible to throw axes. And unfortunately for the Raiders, their bad luck continues. Uh, no ones are scored, and therefore none of the Raiders are uh, able to score a hit against their opponent. Um, we are going to be rolling a clash attack, which is a close combat attack between two regiments. The regiment on the right are Vanguard clones for the Spires, and on the left are Raiders for the Nords. In this example, we're going to be rolling to hit uh, with the Vanguard clones on the right. The Vanguard clones have a clash characteristic of two, and in this game you are looking to roll under the stat. So, for their attacks, we are going to pull out all of our misses, which is any die that is over the clash characteristic, 
And in this case, we're going to end up with five clash hits. Next up is the combat rally action. The combat rally action is identical to the rally action with the one exception that it is done when you are in combat rather than outside of combat. And if your regiment is broken, that effect is immediately removed. So in the example here, the brute drones would like to do a reform to get all three of their uh, bases in contact with the enemy regiment. Um, as it is right now, the guy in back would only be contributing one supporting attack. So there's an advantage to them going ahead and getting him into base so that he can um, make his full complement of five attacks. In order to do that, um, the regiment does need to roll equal to or under their resolve, which for the brute drones is a four. And a four in this instance is just enough. Um, in that instance, they would make a clean reform, which would allow them to adopt a new formation uh, with all three bases in contact. Now, the restrictions for this instance um, are that you have to make sure that you don't move more than half of your march distance with the center of the formation. You also can't have any stand move more than um, its full march value. So if the drone had been further away than six inches, he would not be able to adopt that position. In addition, if he had failed his resolve check, the regiment would take two wounds uh, for uh, having two stands in base contact with the enemy regiment. Um, and that is wounds, not hits. So in that instance, one of the brute drones would just flat lose two wounds. All right, so for whatever reason, the militia have decided that they want to get out of this close combat. Um, perhaps thinking that a few of them need to survive to fight another day. Maybe there's another charge coming in to deal with the brute drones. Whatever the case, they are attempting to make a withdrawal. Now, withdrawals are very risky because in the case of a withdrawal, you do have to roll under your resolve characteristic. For militia, this is a very dangerous prospect because militia are uh, only base uh, resolve two. Um, so they're going to need to roll a two or less. And with a three, they do not so if they had made a clean withdrawal, which would be a uh, resolve or lower, uh, they would take D6 wounds um, and then immediately face away from the brute drones and make a march action. However, since they failed, they take a whopping D6 wounds for each of their stands that are in contact with an enemy regiment. So since all three stands are in contact, in this instance, that would take out seven of the militia. Again, it is wounds, not hits. So seven of the 12 militia would be taken down there. So it is a very, uh, it's a very nice option to have to leave combat, but unlike a lot of other war games, there is no just getting out of combat for free once you're there. There's definitely a cost involved and a huge risk if things do go wrong. With casualties removed, the militia are now facing away and are going to make their march distance uh, to move out of contact with the brute drones. That is it for today's how to play entry. I hope it has been a helpful one. We already have several more of these planned, but if you have anything in particular that you would like to see explained, please leave it in the comment section below so that we can address it as well. We hope you enjoy what you've seen. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button and turned on bell notifications, make sure that you do so you can receive updates whenever new material arrives from the channel. There's also a link below to our Patreon and to our affiliate program with Parabellum War Games. If you'd like to support the channel, these are the two best ways of doing so. You can help yourself as well by using the discount code at checkout on Parabellum's website. And by doing so, you can receive 10% off your first order of Conquest and help the channel while you do. As always, thank you so much for spending time with us at the Maelstrom.